Hello, my name is Elizabeth Abraham and I'm a clinical research nurse at the Massachusetts General Hospital in the breast program. The purpose of this presentation is to describe what's involved in clinical trials to help improve your understanding so you can navigate the process of being on a clinical trial better. The topics that we will discuss in the, in the presentation are as follows. We will talk about what a clinical trial is, why research is important, why safety is our number one priority. We'll review the phases of clinical trials, your cancer research team and primary team. We'll explain what to expect being involved in a clinical trial. And we'll review the consenting process, screening period, on treatment assessments. We'll review what a PK and PD is. We'll explain what the drug diaries are, as well as the storage, handling, and disposal of study medication. We'll also explain when to call the team. We'll review financial coverage, as well as contact information. A clinical trial is research performed in humans. You may also hear clinical trials referred to as research studies or clinical studies. Clinical trials in cancer compare a known treatment for a specific cancer type or stage with a new approach. This can be a new drug, combination of drugs, or a different way of using known treatments. In oncology trials, we also can focus on radiation therapy, surgery, devices, behavioral treatments, standard of care, and much, much more. There are many, many reasons that research is important. Just to name a few, being involved in a clinical trial gives you more treatment options and expands what we have to offer. Being in, uh, involved in research also provides information to advance our understanding and development of new therapies. Participation also helps make discoveries of new treatment options and can lead to improved survival for yourself and others. Clinical trials advance science and help us understand where the future of medicine is going. Safety is always our number one priority in clinical trials. We do conduct extra clinical assessments during the screening process and on treatment to ensure your safety. Some examples of these extra clinical assessments include more frequent CAT scans or restaging scans with TIMC. TIMC is an outside radiology group who looks at your CAT scans and confirms the results. We also measure EKG assist assessments to look at your heart rhythm, echocardiograms at times to look at cardiac output, as well as pretreatment and on-treatment biopsies, which not all trials require. Eye exams at times are reviewed, as well as some extra blood work and labs. There are three phases of clinical trials, phase one, two, and three. In the phase one trials, we focus on safety and how well the drug is absorbed into your body by looking at blood work and metabolism of the drug. We also review dosage and figure out how much and how often you'll take the drug. We identify side effects and phase one trials are first in human. We the, use the information that we gather in the phase one trials to help establish the design for the phase two trials or studies. The Tamir Center at Massachusetts General Hospital is on the seventh floor of the Yaki building and this is where phase one trials occur at the hospital. In phase two clinical trials, we evaluate if the new treatment is working and we look at the efficacy of the drug. We also evaluate the dose ranges and further evaluate safety. Evaluate safety. Oftentimes more individuals are involved in the phase two group than in phase one. In phase three clinical trials, we confirm effectiveness of the drug. We also compare the study drug to other standard treatments. We collect information as well about how your disease is responding to treatment through scans and blood work. Phase three trials can be randomized. What this means is that participants are randomly assigned into separate groups that compare different treatments or other interventions. Phase three trials look at long-term effectiveness prior to drug approval. 
research team has a variety of players. You will have a treating physician, a nurse practitioner or physician assistant, research nurses. You'll have a clinical research associate or coordinator as well as social work also being involved in your care. At times, the research team will be a little different than the primary oncology team. If this is the case, the research team will always collaborate with your primary oncology team. What you can expect with being involved in a clinical trial, we'll review over the next few slides. The clinical trial process involves the following. First, we sign consent and review the trial. Then you enter the screening process or period where we collect assessments to make sure that the trial is a good fit for you. On treatment assessments is when we review and monitor you. And post-treatment assessment, assessments is when we follow up with you after the trial is completed. For the consent process, we review and consign the consent with you to allow you to make the most informed decision possible. The consent form provides you with the following information. We describe the clinical trial and review the risks and benefits. We also will discuss alternative procedures and treatments. We'll always review confidentiality as well, keeping your identity private. The voluntary participation is something always to keep in mind. You can always decide whether or not to take part in a clinical trial. And then finally, the contact information for the research team will be reviewed. During the screening process, after you sign consent, this is the time between signing consent and starting on the clinical trial. Usually this can take one to two weeks. It can be longer though, depending on what the trial requirements are. The research team during this time reviews your medical history and screening assess assessments to ensure the trial requirements are met. This is also confirming safety, again, as our number one priority in order for you to take part in the trial. Each trial has different screening requirements, which can include labs, which are sometimes fasting, imaging, such as CAT scans, bone scans, MRI, or ultrasound, at times, we require the echocardiogram to look at the cardiac output in your heart, EKGs, biopsies at times, either for research purposes or for clinical purposes, and reviewing your daily at-home medications. On-treatment assessments can vary from trial to trial. The research team will review with you your particular schedule, which may or may not include Frequent visits for physical exams, sometimes they're weekly at first to keep a close eye on things and to ensure your safety. We also do require some blood work, EKGs, pharmacokinetic or PK collection. What this is, is blood work that shows the body's effect on the drug. We also review vital signs and monitor temperature, blood pressure, and pulse. We monitor side effects or adverse events. We review the drug diary to ensure dosing and following instruction. You may receive extra nursing phone calls to check in periodically as well. Skin reviews with your oncologist will be involved with both MGH radiologist reviews, as well as our tumor metrics, TIMC, which is our independent review for trial participants. So you have extra sets of eyes reviewing your scans. We ask that you keep a drug diary for oral clinical trial study medication. This diary helps ensure safety and to confirm dosing instructions. The instructions will be reviewed and outlined in the diary, and this will include whether or not you need to fast or not eat before taking any drug. You will be instructed to document the date and time that you take the study drug, including any missed doses. We ask that you bring your drug diary with you to each clinic visit. In this way, we can review and collect all the information at the end of the cycle for review. Your research nurse will deliver the oral study medication to you when you're in clinic. We ask that you keep the study medication in the original bottle and don't put it in an extra pill box or mix it with other medications. 
some study medications need to be refrigerated and we'll let you know if that's the case. Some medications have to be um, kept in a dry location away from direct light and we'll let you know if this is the case as well. We ask that you keep the study medication out of reach from children and pets and that you wash your hands before and after handling medication. We ask that you bring the study medication and all bottles, even if they're empty, back with you each visit. Do not throw the empty bottles away. We'll collect them and dispose them. The research team will also collect any unused medication of other kinds at the end of each cycle. You will work closely with the research team to review the expected and unexpected side effects of your treatment. We always ask that you call to let us know any new symptoms that are included, but not limited to the following. Diarrhea or constipation, nausea or vomiting, a skin change like rash or hives, any new swelling, dizziness, headaches or vision changes, or a temperature of 100.4 or higher. We wanna know everything and anything new that you may be experiencing. Financial coverage. So clinical trial drugs are covered by the trial sponsor. You will not have to pay for these. However, there may be co-pays for doctor's visits, blood work, CAT scans, and anything standard of care related to the trial. Each trial has different billing tables with different coverage plans. We ask that you review your insurance coverage prior to starting a clinical trial to help understand what your coverage involves. You can also email the financial team with specific questions prior to starting a trial. We want you to know that we're here for you and we'll help answer any questions you may have. We're here to help you support, to support you throughout your journey. And I wanna thank you for taking the time to listening to this presentation. Thank you.